and afterwards. I'll just yell out if it's too loud. That's what I'll do. Okay, we'll see what happens. Here we go. Let me. I have my computer on a cart here, so I'm going to wheel in here, and let me change my view to. Is it full screen? No. How do I get myself on there? Exit full screen. Pin myself on. Pin video. There we go. So that way, when you go back and watch the video, you could at least see this is what you'll see recorded. All right. So here we go. Um, enjoy. You could turn it up a little bit, yeah. Hopefully that sounded okay. I think there's an icon for a hand clap. You can do that, or you can do it. Let's see who is that there. I can't see. Yeah, you can name. do that. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that too. So hopefully, th was that volume okay? It got a little louder as it went along, but it yeah, was good. Yeah, I kind of figure because that it's that better than quiet. That, that particular group uh, arrangement kind of builds up as it goes, but th that'll be the, as loud as it gets. So um, this is um, this was a style that uh, a song that I I just. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs to play in concert, my favorite ballad, should I say. And it's a, a some song called Somewhere Out There. 
And I'm going to talk about a few things here, but before we do that, I'm going to do a little screen share here and kind of pull up my PowerPoint. And let's see. And we're going to we'll talk a little bit about uh, somewhere out there um, in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to go over some basic uh, features we talked about last week. And let me pull up my screen share here. Optimize. Okay, share. All right, so you see that up there? And so a week ago, I put up this little screen here that showed um, the, being familiar with some of the most important features. And um, we talked a little bit about rhythm styles last week and, um, and how you can use certain rhythm styles and styles uh, that go for certain songs and then you can take those songs and play them and how those uh, styles will work with other songs well this time this week we want to I want to take a few minutes before I give you some setup tips on the song that we just displayed um, talk a little bit about songs and song setups now these these two things are very similar but they're very different at the same time and so on a lot of the instruments, as you can see there, I have a picture of, um, we have an easy, it looks like an easy 10 there on the top left corner. Uh, the easy series, the four, the twos, and what have you, they have a very similar look. You'll also notice that there's a button that says songs and song setup. Then to the right of that, there is a panel of uh, the Freedom 3 by SD and you can see it's very similar we have a song setup and a song button a lot of similar information and then the bottom screen there is just uh, it's a screen of the I think I took that screen from the symphony which is uh, similar to the Patriot the Liberty the reason why I use that is on the displays because anybody who has a touch screen has the information that you see on the left there. You'll see it says song setup and then all of the information. So if you have a, an Inspire or a Prestige or an instrument like that, you have the one screen and that's what it displays. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, I'm gonna turn this off and come back to the instrument for a moment. Let's talk a little bit about songs and song setups and how you can maximize that more than what you just use it. Because a lot of people think, well, I put a piece of music up. I want to play the song, um, you know, How Great Thou Art. And I look through the song setup list. And, and then what I'll do is I'll put, uh, and I'll try it out and I'll play it. Well, there's, there's a lot more to songs and song setups that meets the eye. And they're, they're very interchangeable. Now, most instruments have a feature called song setup. Now, for song setup, you would do the obvious. You just go through and you'd find a song that you want to play. So for example, if I want to play, you know, Cabarets, which is a song that I feature many times, I just touch Cabaret and then it'll set up a style for me that works nicely. And in this case, it uses a Charleston rhythm. Well, that's well and good, but sometimes when I hear a song like that, then what I'll do is I'll switch and I'll think to myself, well, that actually sounds better with this song or that song. However, there is another hidden feature that you all have, and that's the song feature. Now, a lot of you have a USB where you have all uh, songs recorded. Some of you have recordings of other performers. Well, what's great about this is the song performances that you have and then there's some that are built in work both ways now so for example I think what I'll do is I'll wheel over here and if I could do this without going over any chords here and here is an instrument that some of you are familiar with 
call the easy 10 you have an easy four so we got a, a very similar looking instrument here so I'm going to turn it on here and so in the dash like I showed you on the screen what you can do is you can use a feature it's called song setup now what's nice about these song setups is that yeah they get you started but there's another hidden gem here with the song feature so for example if I want to play a song here let's say do re mi all right now if I play the song naturally what's going to happen is the song's going to start playing and then I can just listen to it so that's one way you can use that feature so here we go well that's nice however that song is just playing but here's how you can use that feature as a song setup now if you notice I let it play for a few eh, what five or six measures and then what I did is I stopped now what you can do is as long as you stop it and don't touch anything that setting is now on the instrument so now you can play that song here we go which is really nice because typically when I play the song Do Re Mi, here's what I do. I go into the song setup and I find a song like Do Re Mi or maybe no business like show business, those are all Broadway songs. Let's see, I gotta know my alphabet. M, no biz like show biz. If it's even in here. Oh, it's not in there. Oh, there it is, yeah, I thought it was. I'm gonna hit select. Now here is the setup for no business like show business, which typically is the same thing that a lot of people use for um, uh, Do Re Mi. So as you can see, it's an entirely different rhythm, but if you put on the song feature, so if I put on the song feature and I find the song that I want to play, you'll notice that the style for Do Re Mi, for example, is a totally different style. So what happens is the song feature now becomes an avenue as a song setup. So just as a recap, song play songs play the music for you song setup sets it up for you to play the song however if you're using the song feature you can also use it as a song setup so a lot of the models like the uh, easy 10 for example has I think 40 songs in there that you can use you also have um, the easy 2 has I think 20 songs uh, some of you have an easy 4 there's 20 or 30 songs and for those of you who have USBs the songs aren't built into the instruments but what you do have is a USB that has typically there's a the 50 songs that a lot of you have with it but what happens is now you can use that feature as a as another way to play so for example when I was playing earlier if I wanted to play the song let me you access the USB here So what will happen is, let's see, I'll find a song in here and, and I'll, that I recorded. Let's see, New York, New York. All right, so that's a great song. And what I'll do is I'll start to play it. And what I'll encourage people to do is when they have this music, I'm going to turn it down just a couple notches here.
Now, if you like what you're hearing in a recording, you can continue just listening to it or just stop the recording. Leave that set up there. Take your music and start playing it from there. So the song feature becomes a much more widely used feature than you normally would use on an instrument. To me, it's one of those f the features that people use because they just think once in a while they have company over or some family or maybe they're doing something in the background and, just, and it's just for listening. But you'd be surprised. A lot of people acquire recordings over the, over the years of other artists and a lot of times when you're doing that what's happening is you're hearing back the setups that they're using is coming up on the instrument so if you have a usb and they're playing their songs just stop it so you know there's a dennis all who who has a lot of recordings he's sold you know they sell these things to make a living but now that you have the recordings you can stop the recording part way and then just use that as a setup uh marco mendez or um, I put out some recordings out there. A lot of the talented staff members out there have these wonderful recordings, and sometimes we use setups that aren't necessarily just built into the instrument. So before I go on to the next segment, I want to give an opportunity now for any questions or anything that we've covered so far. So you'll have to use those handy tips that uh, Sean just gave you about raising the hand, and then Sean will... He's the hand raising principal. And don't forget, if he's if he's saying something and and you missed a missed a word or you missed something, you can raise your hand at any time uh, throughout this, and uh, you know I, we can stop and go over what you need. We don't want you to think we're silencing everybody. You know, you can say what you need to say, even if it's a comment. You know, I use that all the time. You can say stuff like that too. So, any questions? This is a smart group. They don't have questions. Oh, wait, we got one. Okay, go ahead. Try it next time when I'm at my organ, which is across the room. Say that again. I've never tried this feature. I will now try it on my organ that's across the room. What kind of organ do you have? Just. I have a Rialto. Okay, do you have a USB with some songs recorded on there? Yes, I have a USB with some songs, and I have one from uh, Diane Orr. Okay, so if, if those songs are, yeah, that's great, because I don't, I don't have any recordings of her. So if she recorded music, here's what you want to find out on that instrument. There's two ways to record it, and just like the other models that have CDs, if they recorded music, if you see buttons changing on the panel, mm -hmm. you know she's using the, that, that instrument to play it. You can stop it, and now you have that setup that she was using for that song. Wow. I have a lot of arrange I have a lot of great arrangements that aren't really my arrangements. They're someone else's arrangement that I stole. I've always been a mastermind and come in because I get ideas that way, not just by the song setups. Great. Any other uh, questions or comments about this? All right, and what I'm going to do is I featured a song here. I'm going to feature a little song, and then Robert, we have we have one more. Sorry, oh, go ahead. I was on mute. I didn't realize. Uh, we've got Lisa here as well. You can go ahead, Lisa. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm clear about this. So, when you start to play it, are you playing it by yourself or are you playing it along with the organ? Well, the answer could be yes. <laughs> so let me <laughs> let me ask you a question. What instrument do you play on? I have an easy four. Okay. So the the song feature uh the the, the 
the are you referring to the song feature now or the song setup the song feature okay the song feature there's an added uh, i'm glad you brought that up because i knew there was something i wanted to mention about this the song feature has an added um built-in feature to it and that is what you just mentioned when you're playing a song that's pre-recorded whether it's built into the instrument or USB the, the the end result is the same you're playing back a recording you have you have three options one just sit back and listen and enjoy and just mm -hmm. like a cassette or see well I don't we don't do cassettes anymore but just like any other recording you would listen to the radio okay option two is what I just talked about which is stop it if you like what you hear stop it and then use that setup to play the song now here's a little before I go to the third which is leading down the path of your question if you have an instrument that has built-in songs like the easy series the uh, the freedom threes the older models the odysseys and so forth if you have an instrument that has a built-in where the songs are built in and you're playing those songs and you want to use that as a setup here's what happens a lot of students will press stop and then they'll go okay I'll begin playing you don't want to do that you want to make sure the song features off because if you press start again what will happen is the recording will start over so what you do is you stop the recording the play the playback turn off the song feature and then play your song okay now the third option for a song recording is you can play along with it. And here's the cool thing about this. If you have an instrument, a one keyboard model, like an easy two or easy one, you can still play along with it on the melody. So what you'll hear is two melodies. You have the one that's being played, or you can play um, the one that's being played or in the part that you're playing. For those of you who have maybe a two keyboard instrument, here's what's happening on a recording. A lot of time on the recording, the person that recorded, it's either using the top or the bottom keyboard. It's rare that they're doing both keyboards because they only have two hands. And they're playing their left hand and the melody. So for example, let me change my view here so when I play this, when I give you this, you can see it a little better. What I'm going to do is put on, I mentioned, uh, I'm going to put on my recording of Cabaret. What you're going to notice when I'm playing this, this is the recording of me playing it. The top keyboard is going to be playing the notes. Because if I remember correctly, when I recorded this, I started on the top keyboard. Then you're going to notice on the bottom keyboard, there's a sound here. I can play along with it. So here we go. Now I'm going to let it play for a minute, so that's the recording going. Now at this point, if I want, I can join in. You also notice I get a little fancy. There were some extra notes. You can, it's a great time to, to, to try out rehearsing and improvising a little bit. And the beauty of that is when you're playing back a recording and play along with it, if you goof up or you feel you get a little flustered, you could just stop playing and let it continue and then come back and join in at any time. So really, the song feature has three main uses. One, as a recap, to just listen to it. Two, listen to it, and if you like it, stop, and that setup should remain on the instrument. And then, or three, you can play along with it, and it's a great way to rehearse adding little extra notes to it, uh, to the recording. A lot of times when I record, a lot of the artists, sometimes they'll play down here, and then this leaves an opportunity for you to play on the top. Now, if you want, you can also... 
play along with it on the top keyboard, but you're going to have, in this case, I have a clarinet, so you hear two clarinets. So did, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, hopefully, uh, I'm glad you asked that question because I knew there was something else about the song that I wanted to mention and you kind of triggered that thought. Okay, looks like someone else is, anybody else raising their hand? Rich, it's hard for me to look at you without laughing. You got your fancy background design. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Good question. All right, so what I'm going to do is I played a song in the beginning, and the song was called Somewhere Out There, and very quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up on the screen here, and, and I'll give you a couple little setup tips, and by the way, I will send out the music for the, the song in a follow-up email. You'll have it by, I think, Saturday if I can get to it in time, and I'm just going to pull up the screen here again. And let's see. So the song Somewhere Out There, it comes from a movie called An American Tale. And that little mouse is called, uh, it has the name FIFO. And if you haven't seen the movie, it's a great uh, animated series. It's a, Steel a Steven Spielberg production back, uh, I forget what they call that uh, company. But they, um, it's a, it was an animated movie about a family of mice. They flee a country um, be, to come to America because they think there are no cats in America. And uh, the opening of the movie uh, sh starts off with uh, these, or not the opening, f fight, trying to stay alive. And then they get on this, this big ship that um, uh, is getting ready to leave dock and then there's a rope that's attached and all these mice are getting on the rope into the little hole and then as they go through the hole of the, sh the ship on the other side there's a counter there and, th and they're taking their passports and they're making it very human like and the ship goes in a nasty storm and what happens is this mouse um, Fifle uh, gets thrown off uh, overboard finds his way into a, a glass bottle of some sort and lands on shore in America only to find that there are lots of cats in America. In fact, I think that's one of the songs. There are no cats in America. They're all singing beforehand. And they and basically the whole movie is about him finding his way back to his, trying to find his way back to his family safely and not getting eaten by the cats. And in the part of the song, he's sitting up on this top there and he's singing somewhere out there. He's singing out to the, the sky and that's the view. And uh, you heard me play the song a little bit, but here's the, the music is, what I like about the song is it's a, an extremely uh, easy song to play. And these little numbers, when you receive this, this was just some of the presets numbers that I used to program it when I wanted to play it. Um, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, the original recording was uh, with Linda Ronstad and I can't remember the other person but as you can see it's a very nice simply very easy song to to play the key of C and what you're going to find here is and I'll come back to the instruments in a minute these are all the the styles that work very nicely with this now what you heard me play when I played it initially if you see the the style down there on the far right it says love ballad what you heard was, oh, I got to load in my presets here. Oh, I still have the recording on. Here we go. Okay. So what you heard was, a style like that, which normally sounds like this.
and that's simply a style called love ballad and there are every instrument in the line has a style that is perfect for the song that was the one i used it for many 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 years um uh originally started out on an instrument called the royale and i just loved playing that style well as time went on and and instruments were more instruments were being introduced there are other styles that work nicely. You can see across the board there. So a uh, mellow, easy 8-beat is a nice instrument, uh, a style that you can use. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that up for a second, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll pan over to a couple instruments here uh, and you, let you hear it on a few of the models, the different style choices, so you get a little taste of what it'll do. Um, so yeah, mellow, easy 8-beat, basically easy, 8-beat, easy, 4-4 four, four in the easy series. Uh, those styles are very similar in nature. Uh, they're, uh, they're titled differently, but they're very similar in the way they sound. Uh, and then there's one called the 16-beat that a lot of the models have, which I'll, I'll finish off with. And so you get a little taste of all of the varieties of styles. So you really got about two or three, three great styles. Keep in mind, it... There are many more that can be used. These were just a, the very quick snapshot ones. And then what happens is, is I'm going to come on over here to the, um, da, 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 let's see here. Stop the screen share. And I'm going to bring it back over. And what I'll do is I'll start over here to my left and just play a few notes for you. And so you could hear it on the different models. So you have the option of uh, your typical, what is a very standard style. Um, it's called um, an easy 4-4 four four style. It's been around for many years, um, and it's such a great style. It just never gets old when you want to find something for a, um, a song that's really pretty. And so something like this would go. Put on the intro. So as you can see, that works nicely with it. That's called your Easy 4-4. Four four. And uh, it's just a great style that works nicely with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually unplug this model. And I'm going to use it and plug in another one over here. And then I'll jump over, see if I can do this without messing up all my cords here. Okay, so we'll come over here. Um, this is, um, we actually have some students that are, um, have acquired this model. And this instrument here is called the Freedom 3 by Esty. And so for those of you who have that, we also have uh, a, a very similar style that, that'll work nicely with it. I don't know how I have the volume set on this yet, but we'll see. Hopefully I don't blast you out of here. And so again, we have your mellow, what we call easy eight beat, which is gonna sound something like this. Is that volume okay, Sean? It's pretty quiet. You might want to turn that up. Okay, all right. Turn it up over here. Here we go. Here we go. Helps if I change the chord. Okay, how is that? Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, as you can see, it's a very similar style that you can use. But any of your pretty ballads will work nicely 
Um, there's another one that I mentioned on the screen called 16 beat. Now 16 beat is a little different because you don't, it actually counts in 16 beats, but you wouldn't play it that way. So if you listen, So the way you hear it is one, two, three, and four. But it's really counting, if you hear that, it's really counting what they call a 16B. 16, 16 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, yeah, so it's counting very, very fast. But when you listen to it, you hear it this way. So there are a lot of great styles. Now, what I love to do with this song is I simply start off with a whatever pretty setting, but partway through, I always like to throw in a little bit of the saxophone in there, which is really nice. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, finish off with that on this instrument here, and what you'll get is all of the all of the information you get from today along with the music and for those of you who are able to do it I'll, I'll attach the presets to it through a Dropbox people have a little difficulty with that but we'll work our way through it so the presets as you hear on here today I'll send them so you have the ability to do that um, before I uh, adjourn I wanna if you have any questions I have some um, now's a good time and I'm going to do a couple quick announcements here and um, so now's a good time to use the raise the hand feature. Any raise hands? Nope, not so far. Uh, we right. got Julia, actually. Go ahead, Julia. Um, were you using Cascade or could you use Golden Harp in the beginning? I actually, when I, when I play the song, uh, this song, I have two ways of doing it. Sometimes I'll start off with a golden harp only without rhythm. I don't use mm -hmm. the cascade much, but then again, that doesn't mean you can't. But I mm -hmm. actually, I have a couple ways of doing this. That's one of the ways I do it. I'll start off with a little cas um, uh, golden harp first, and then I go into the rhythm. Okay, thanks. It looks like someone named iPad. Yeah, the next one here we've got, we can't see your name, so sorry, but it's. Uh, I'm gonna unmute iPad 2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. It's echoing a lot. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yep, that's better. Yeah, my question, Robbie had a throwaway line in there. You, when you said you, you throw a little saxophone in there, uh, what preset would you normally like playing that song? And where you think it's throw your saxophone in it? Well, when I play, when I finish off here, I'm going to play it and pay very close attention. You'll see when it comes in, in the middle of the song, you'll hear it. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to play the song with the arrangement that you hear. I'm going to send out some follow-up notes with some of the settings that I'm going to do. For those of you who have presets, you can download them. If you don't, just read the notes and it'll tell you where I use the sounds and where. So. Hold that, it, hold that question, listen to the song, and then keep right out in the email and the follow-up notes, and it'll have that. All okay, right. we have Inez? one more question from, I think it's Inez. Yeah, that's me. So when I, when, when I download the, um, the music, the presets will be in there already? Yes. Well, there'll be a separate link. Okay. It'll, be a, it'll, be a, it'll say, click here to watch the video with the recordings. It'll say, click here to download the music. Click here for the priest. There'll be several different things you okay. can click. And you wanna okay. click the one that's appropriate for yourself, obviously. Okay. All right? Thanks. Okay, a couple quick announcements. <clears throat> Hold on, Robert, I see one more. He's raising his hand on the on the screen here. So I'm gonna try to okay. find Rich here and, uh, hold on just a second. Okay, go ahead, Rich. I just wanna let you know when I shut off my virtual video, 
because I didn't want you guys to think that an alien was watching this. Yeah. <laughs> it All did right. look a little like an alien. Commented about, commented about my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple quick announcements, and I'm going to replay the song. Uh, and then I've got another class starting here in about six or seven minutes. And uh, But I want to get the announcements. I want to be able to play the song all the way through so you enjoy that. Um, first of all, next week we have a totally different class that we're going to teach. Sean took some time and put about a five-minute video together recording with him video. And it, and it has some instructions in it. And then we're going to see if you can catch the things that he uses. And then we basically teach a whole class off of that video. So um, be prepared. So it's a great, it's a great instructional video that we throw in and what have you. And there's all but sorts of little fun tips with it. Secondly, uh, keep in, stay in tune because pretty soon I'm going to be announcing a learn how to memorize a song workshop that um, uh, I've done in the past. A lot of people always want to know how to do it, so I'm going to do that. We have some other workshops we're going to be. Uh, featuring uh, for people that have the bigger models and for the smaller models, separate workshops that are catered to this, those instruments. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., uh, 1, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, Florida time, we're doing a Facebook Live. And last week, Jerome was supposed to show up and come, and he was feeling just a lot of weather. It was nothing serious. We just figured we'll wait another week. So stay tuned in for that. I already posted the, uh, the, the thing for that. Um, and... Uh, um, last but not least, um, we want to thank you for joining in today. Stay involved because as we do this, this is going to evolve. We're going to have other uh, class instructors across the board helping out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feature um, the somewhere out there for you now at this point using some of the setups. Listen for that saxophone partway through. And we hope you enjoy today's class. But next week, you're in for a real special treat because with the way uh, Sean put that instructional video just is going to be a whole different way of uh, giving you some instruction for all of the models. Okay? So here we go. And enjoy. Let's see if I can find. Oh, there we go. <laughs>
see that last note there. Well, there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed today's class. And uh, we're keeping it simple there for everyone. We've got some fun little tricks up our sleeve for next week. So stay tuned in. And if you have any questions, send me an email. And uh, we'll have this information out to you probably by Saturday at the latest. And uh, so I'll email, I'll, email, I'll email all of the information to you. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you on Facebook Live tomorrow. And you can unmute yourself and say goodbye on your way out if you'd like. Yep, everybody has the ability to unmute themselves now. If you want to say bye, you can. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thank you. Rich, thank you for that fancy virtual background. Alfina Schnitzel. Thank you, Ken. Mm -hmm. Like the music in the background. Cheerio. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye. All right. We'll make it better for you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>